Hey LHS, I'm Isali Irizari. And I'm Julian. As of today, if you're driving to school, everyone must have a parking pass. You should not be parking on campus without a pass. If you do, you'll receive a green sticker that is very hard to remove. Also, you should not park in any spot other than your own. If a student arrives to school and someone is in their spot, they need to park in the back and let Ms. Davis know, not park in the next spot. Youth and Government will have an interest meeting today after school in room B107. There will be a Lebanon Ladies interest meeting on Friday at 7.15 and A303. Anyone interested in helping with Club Rush should attend. There's a student council meeting on Thursday after school in the library. We will be discussing t-shirt themes and class fundraising. Now if you're interested in HOSA, listen up. HOSA signups begin now. Cost for state slash national affiliation is $16 and you must have or had one health science class in order to qualify. The first HOSA event is August 19th, which is senior night at the fair. See Ms. Tomlinson or any HOSA member to sign up. Students, we want to encourage you to begin thinking about the Tennessee Governor's Schools. Tennessee Governor Schools provide 11 challenging and high-intensity programs for rising 11th and 12th grade students. BDN will show a series of videos that demonstrate various subject areas offered. Take a look at this clip. Remember, you could study Ag Science, Business, Humanities, and many more. BDN will have more information for you in the future. We are so excited football season is back, and our first game is this Friday at 7, the Jamboree. All teams will play a half game. Be sure to buy your tickets in advance so all proceeds go to LHS football. Bowling team tryouts are August 13th and 15th, starting at 3.30 at Pro Bowl West. If you showed up for the first set back in May and turned in your sports physical, then you will not need another. If you're trying out for the first time, make sure your sports physical is in hand at 3.30 on Tuesday. Attention boys and girls tennis players, there will be a parent meeting for all players and for anyone interested in playing tennis in the spring. The meeting will be at 5.45 p.m. tonight. It's trivia time again and it will take place in your third block class. All slots are full, but if you would like to participate, have your teacher email Miss Nick ASAP and we'll see if we can fit you in the schedule. The ACT will be here before you know it, and the first date of this year is September 14th, and you must be registered by this Friday, August 16th, on ACT.org. Here are some test-taking tips to help you. Hello, and welcome to Here Tutoring. In this video, we're going to talk about when and how to use the answer choices for the ACT math test. First, let's just make sure we say that we are allowed to use the answer choices. The ACT math test is not like a normal math test, where we need to start from the beginning and work to the end, showing all of our work. In fact, we shouldn't do that because our goal isn't to show anyone that we know how to do the question. Rather, our goal for the ACT math test is simply to get the right answer as quickly as possible, using whatever method necessary. And sometimes the best method to get the right answer is to just use the answer choices and plug them back into the question, even if we know how to do the questions the right way. This is because sometimes the right way to do the question will actually take a lot longer than just using the answer choice. Now, let's talk about how and when to use the answer choices. Regarding the how, the most efficient way to use the answer choices is to start with C, 
since it will always be the choice that's right in the middle. If C ends up being wrong, then we only need to pick one more choice to find the right answer. If C ends up being too big, then we know the answer needs to be either A or B, then we just need to pick either A or B to plug in. If it's right, then great. If it's wrong, then we know the answer is the other one. Likewise, if C ends up being too small, then we know the answer will be either D or E, so we pick one of them to plug in. If it's right, great. If it's wrong, then we know the answer is the other one. On the other hand, if we just started with choice A and worked forwards, we might need to try four different choices if the answer is E, instead of just two using this method where we start with C. Now, let's try this with two examples. First, let's take a look at this question. If 2n plus 1 squared minus n minus 5 squared equals 16, then what could be a value of n? Our choices are 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. For this question, we should recognize that it would take quite a while to foil out the entire problem and find the roots, so this will be a perfect question to use the answer choices for. So let's start by trying choice C, which is 4. When we plug 4 in, we end up getting 9 squared minus negative 1 squared equals 16, which simplifies to 81 minus 1 equals 16, which is 80 equals 16, which doesn't work. We see that 80 is too big, so let's try one of the smaller choices. Let's try A by plugging 1 back into the original equation. When we do this, we end up getting 3 squared minus negative 4 squared equals 16, which simplifies to 9 minus 16 equals 16, which simplifies to negative 7 equals 16, which doesn't work either. So now we know the answer needs to be between A and C, or between 1 and 4, so we can just pick B at this point and move on. But if we wanted to check this, we would see that plugging 2 back into the equation gets us 5 squared minus negative 3 squared equals 16, which simplifies to 25 minus 9 equals 16, which simplifies to 16 equals 16. With this method of using the answers, we will only need to try at most two of the answer choices, whereas if we started from the beginning, we might need to try up to four choices. Now, if we wanted to actually set this question up and solve it, we would have had to distribute or foil out everything, combine all the like terms, get everything to one side so they equal zero, and then find the roots, probably using the quadratic formula, which would have taken a lot longer. Using the answer choices was a much better option for this question. Now, let's try one more example together. Let's take a look at this question. In a bag of marbles, one-third of the marbles are red, one-fourth of the marbles are blue, one-sixth of the marbles are green, and 21 marbles are yellow. How many total marbles are in the bag? Our choices are 48, 60, 72, 84, and 96. Like with the last question, we can figure out pretty quickly that this question will take a while to set up and solve, and that using the answer choices will probably be quicker and easier. So here's how we could use the answer choices. Let's start with C, which is 72. If there are 72 marbles in the bag, then one-third, or 24, are red, one-fourth, or 18, are blue, one-sixth, or 12, are green, and 21, are yellow. This adds up to 75 marbles, which is higher than 72, so we know that 72 is too small, which means we should try D or E for our next answer choice to use. Let's try D, or 84. If there are 84 total marbles in the bag, then one-third, or 28, are red, one-fourth, or 21, are blue, one-sixth, or 14, are green, and 21, are yellow. This adds up to 84, which is what we were aiming for, so our answer is D. As you can see, if we had started from A and moved forward, we would have needed to try three answer choices instead of just two. If we had wanted to set up and solve an equation for this question, we would have done one-third x plus one-fourth x plus one-sixth x plus 21 equals x, then we would have changed the fractions to common denominators to get 4 over 12x plus 3 over 12x plus 2 over 12x plus 21 equals x, then we would have combined the like terms to get 9 over 12x plus 21 equals x, which simplifies to 3 over 4x plus 21 equals x. Then we subtract 3 over 4x from both sides to get 21 equals 1 over 4x. And finally, we multiply both sides by 4 to get x equals 84, which is our answer, but that took a lot longer than just using the answer choices. So the two examples that we just went through helped give us an idea of what kinds of questions would be good candidates for using the answer choices. Generally speaking, the questions that we want to consider using this method for are ones where setting up and solving the algebraic equation would take longer than just plugging in the answer choices. In the next video, we're going to talk about an ACT math strategy similar to this one, which is substituting in random, easy numbers into the question to figure out the answer. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Now remember, the more you take the ACT, the better your scores can get. That's all the news we have for you today, LHS. I'm Julian. And I'm Iselli. And, and this, this has, has been news to you from, from the white and blue. blue.